वेलकम बैक टू द पार्ट टू ऑफ द लैब इलेवन ट्यूटोरियल लैब इलेवन लैब ट्यूटोरियल सो सो फार वट वी हैव डन इज वी हैव एडेड टू मॉड्यूल्स टू आर आई पी द फर्स्ट वन इज क्यू अंडर स्कोर फंक्शन अंडर स्कोर कैलसी इन विच द एक्चुअल फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट ऑपरेशन आई पी वर इंसेंशिएटेड टू परफॉर्म द ऑपरेशन एक्स बाई टी प्लस स्क्वायर रूट एल एन एल्फा बाई टी राइट एंड इन द टॉप मॉड्यूल द टॉप मॉड्यूल वॉज प्रोवाइडिंग ऑल द सिग्नल्स नीडेड फॉर क्यू अंडर स्कोर फंक्शन अंडर स्कोर कैलसी एंड द क्यू फॉर अंडर स्कोर फंक्शन अंडर स्कोर टॉप इज गेटिंग दीज वैल्यू एक्स टी एंड एन अल्फा एंड इन फॉर अंडर स्कोर वैलिड फ्रॉम द स्लेव मॉड्यूल सो वी विल बी लुकिंग इन टू हाउ वी आर पासिंग दिस वैल्यू सो बिफोर आई गो इन टू दैट सो वन थिंग आई नीड टू करेक्ट सो इन द पार्ट वन वीडियो आई सेट वेन यू यूज द ग्लोबल ऑप्शन ड्यूरिंग वाइल एडिंग द फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट आई पी so the synthesis process will not take place so it is not the correct thing so synthesis will either way take place the only thing is the clock information so in the when you select the global global option so clock information will be taken from your project uh, from your constraint file but in the case of the out of context so the clock information will not be taken from your constraint file but either way the clock uh, the global option is a bit faster than your out of context option so you can use either one of them it's up to you yes uh, and one more thing that i forgot to tell you about the t underscore valid when to get it zero right so we said whenever there is a transition in the inform underscore valid from zero to one we said that t underscore valid as one but when to deassert it so whenever the handshake have taken place we have to deassert it so how we are getting to know about the handshake so whenever the handshake is taking place we are setting count underscore t underscore next equals to two so there can be multiple ways of doing it so i'm doing it in this way so you can do it in some other way as well so that's not an issue so whenever this count underscore t underscore red goes to 2 i'm just set that means the handshake have taken place so i'm setting t underscore red equals to 0 the same logic as logic applies to all the way uh, x n n alpha as well so these are the things i wanted to recall so next let's move on to how to make some, make the changes in the slip Yeah. So in the slave code, we have already seen that uh, there is a there is a template code in which what we are doing, whatever number of registers we have specified, there is a read and write transaction happening on those uh, those registers. So using this code, we can write some values onto the, those registers, and we can read the values from those registers. So now, as we as I said the background earlier as well. So what what's going to happen is we will be writing a thirty two bit value on the slave register zero, and from those from thirty two bits. i will be assigning the x t n and alpha and then i will be setting some inform underscore valid signal high so that will be informing my, my next top ip to is that that is your q underscore function underscore top ip to to provide the valid signal for the x t n that means the data has been changed so now let's set the user logic and discuss how it is okay so first thing is providing the values of x t n and alpha so as i discussed earlier so we are using the 32 bits and we are dividing it in the four different parts so the msb's 8 bit goes to x and the next 8 bits goes to t and next 8 bits go to n and finally the lsb 8 bits goes to alpha so that's how we have assigned x t n and alpha right so the only thing that is left is inform underscore valid how to assign the inform underscore valid so whenever there is a right transaction from ps to pl from ps to pl when i say from the c code to the slave register 0 so as there is a exile light transaction so there will be one address phase there will be data phase as well so what will happen uh, there there is some address so there the address will be of slave register 0 and then there is some data which will be written onto the uh, slave register 0 so first thing is whenever there is a data involved there will be w underscore valid signal right right underscore valid signal as well so there is right data and then there is right valid so first i will be looking into the valid signal once i get the valid signal high and second whenever the address which with whatever is put onto the address bus decodes to to uh, the the address of the slave register 0 right so whenever there is the valid signal on uh, valid data and whenever there is a address that is of slave register 0 i can set the inform underscore valid as high and that is quite intuitive because if there is a valid signal in what and the address is of slave register 0 that simply means that a new data is coming on to on for the slave register 0 now how i got this statement so i have not written it on my own or i have not done anything new 
so it is taken from the same this code only so this is the right transaction taking place in this code so at the 210th line you can see you can read this so in here i can see some address decoding is taking place so according to this address there can be it can be decoded to either save register 0 save register 1 save register 2 or save register 3 that's how it is happening right so that's what I've uh, done in the inform underscore valid. So whenever there is a valid signal and the address decodes to the two, the say register zero, I will set the inform underscore valid as high, right? That is fine. And the clock and the A reset and these are the signals which is com which is common to all the modules, which is also taken from here. It is again fine. So one thing that is left is this Q. So this Q will be coming from the top IP. Q underscore function underscore top and Q underscore function underscore top will be receiving it from the Q underscore function underscore Kelsey, right? So whenever I got the Q, I need to write it back to the slave register zero because again, I will be reading the slave register zero, right? So let's see how to do that. So this, there, this will be a read transaction. Obviously, this will be a read transaction that will be happening by the C code. So let me define a wire. 31 down to 0 Q right and I have to make this change in the slave register 0 so Q will be written under the sale save register 0 and finally uh, whatever is the value of Q which we obtain can be read from the slave register 0 so we have made two essential essentially made two changes. We have added this user logic and we have uh, said, transferred this queue to the save register zero again. This is the read transaction happening, right? So this read transaction will be happening from the C code uh, to, to this register. So whatever in the register zero. So we're taking the value from the register zero. We are doing the calculations and then we are putting it again under the slave register zero, right? So again, the C code can read this value from the save register zero. So that's all the changes that we need to made into the code. We have done all the changes, so that is fine. Next thing is to write a test bench and see if our uh, this calculation is coming out to be fine or not, right? So for that, uh, let's write a test bench. Okay. You can specify the file location. Yeah, that is fine. So in the test bench, let's write the code. Okay, so it's a very basic code. Nothing new is there. So all the inputs are uh, transformed into the registers and all the outputs are transformed into the wire. So as you can see, I'm just calling the Q underscore function underscore top because ultimately the functionality will be given by this Q underscore function underscore top. This is providing me the Q output. That's why I'm doing this. So in form underscore valid, I am setting it high according to the uh, from the test range. Similarly for the XTN. So this is the in so initial phase in the way I have initialized it to the zero while defining it all the registers right then at the 100 nanosecond the reset goes high and x after that uh, at 120 nanosecond is xt and get uh, and then gets, gets the value and then after uh, at 140 inform underscore valid equals to zero and finally at 300 nanosecond we'll be stopping the simulation once we get the results okay so let's save it And one more thing that you need to do, you need to set it as a top because right now your top is Q underscore function underscore IP underscore VO1 underscore zero. Right. So now your test bench is the top module and now you can run the simulation. So just run the simulation and it will take a while because you have already experienced that in lab seven and lab eight that it usually takes a while to get the answer from the floating point IP. So let's wait for a while and we'll look at it. All right, so we have got the result as you can see at 300 nanoseconds is stopped. So the pointer came here by default. And one more thing is uh, this test bench, let's see. 
what we are getting. So let's convert it into more readable. Okay. Uh, okay this is simple procedural yeah so this is the result uh, that came after uh, we we have ran it so as you can see we have not included all those valid signals and everything because the valid ready handshake has been taken care in the top code itself so we are assigning the queue only when the we got the valid signal from the ip right so this is the valid value of the uh, of of x by t plus square root ln alpha by t and you can also verify it using the scientific calculator so you will get the same value so that is about the simulation so we can close the simulation now because our functional logic is working fine the next thing is to package the ip so we have made all the essential changes needed for this particular lab for this function uh, q function ip Next thing is the first thing is you have to disable the test bench file because we don't need to package this thing, right? Uh, so just disable it from here. Once you disabled it, go to the package IP window. Yeah. So once you disable it, so it needs to pick a top module. Okay. So once you disable it, you can go to the package IP window again. So. As you can see in the file groups, we have, as we have edited the file, so we have to merge just merge the changes, right? So go to the file groups and merge changes from the file group wizard. Once you have done it, a so tick will come here and next go to review and package. And finally, you can click on repackage IP. So once you have packaged it, you, you can close the project. Yes. Now let's see if we have uh, our IP present in our IP repo or not. So what we will do is uh, we will go to the IP catalog and we can see the user repository is already there. So if, if it is not there in your case, what you can do is go to settings. In the IP defaults, in the default IP repository, you can add this. Like whatever is the top folder of your uh, designs, you can just add to it, that folder because IP repo folder will be there. So once you add this and you search for the Q function IP, so you can see. So our IP was this Q function underscore IP. So this is our IP and we can see here. So we can directly use from it, use it from the IP catalog now. So that was all about lab 11. So we have uh, created a new IP. So in the next lab, we will be using this IP for calculation of the floating point operation. Earlier we used, we, we did the floating point operation using the PS only. Now we will look into the PL part of it and we'll see if we can get any acceleration on the floating mine operations. So that's it for the lab 11. Thank you very much.